fat is bad for you. I just pop a pill and I'm fine. Meat is murder. <laughs> it's time for bad food punishment. It's time for real nourishment. It's time for the nutrition heretic. The following program is provided as information only and may not be construed as medical or health advice. It is not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure any disease. No action or inaction should be taken solely on the basis of the information provided here. Please consult with a licensed healthcare professional or doctor on any matter relating to your health and well-being. Hello and welcome to the Nutrition Heretic Podcast. This is Adrian Hugh, the Nutrition Heretic. Uh, today we've got yet another special guest heretic uh, on the line. And uh, this is somebody whom I, I'm not even sure how much he realizes that I, I've known who he is for, for ages. We've we met, oh gosh, probably going on, I don't know, 12, 15 years ago, um, we had met at a conference and I have been purchasing his product ever since for my family. Uh, but before that, I wanted to uh, discuss something that happened to me as a result of a previous guest. As, as a matter of fact, it was last week's guest, uh, Christina Heike. She, as you may remember or not, uh, does something called new decision therapy. And throughout the interview, I was kind of giving her a run for, for her money because I was asking her to compare NDT to other forms of energy psychology and energy medicine that I'm familiar with. And she couldn't really comment on that. So I uh, set up an appointment with her to get some treatment for myself because I had been going through a, a series of overwhelming experiences. And these overwhelming experiences basically were taking my life in a direction that I didn't like seeing it, it go. I was having trouble hiring people and it didn't matter what I was hiring them for, whether it was hiring them to work with me uh, it, in my business or hiring them uh, to move my stuff from one house to another or to fix a leaky toilet. Doesn't matter. Every time I seem to choose the wrong person. So I went in for, and the reason why I'm telling you this is because, you know, I was having trouble understanding exactly how her modality f fit in. And so I thought I'd just relay where I think it's going. So anyway, we did this uh, uh, appointment. We, it lasted about an hour and a half and I've got to tell you, it has been totally changing. I, even just looking at myself, as if you remember, part of the therapy is to look in the mirror. And even just looking at myself in the mirror, I look different one and a half hours later <laughs> after doing this modality with her. But the other thing is that since then, I've found that my relationship with my staff is better and my relationship with other people that I'm hired, that I had to hire over the past week, uh, were has dr dramatically changed. So if you are going through uh, some tough times, uh, I think that this is a, a really, really helpful therapy for you. Uh, it could be, um, and it could unveil some uh, deep-seated uh, anxieties and resentments and whatever else you're bringing to the table, that death wish that we talked about, uh, because it, she uncovered something that I didn't even realize was the beginning of all of these poor choices that I had made. So if you're you know, feeling stuck in certain things that I, I would totally stand behind, uh, Christina's work. And, uh, you, you know, want to go check her out at new decision therapy, nyc.com. So moving on to today's, uh, topic, uh, wanted to talk a little bit about paranoia in the food supply. As you know, I'm sure you've seen food pyramids and all the gurus online telling you that you should eat fish because it's good for you and omega threes and all of this kind of stuff. You know, it's good. you need these oils, you need the fats, uh, you need, um, the vitamins, particularly uh, vitamins uh, A and D, come from various parts of the fish. Uh, however, the caveat is always that don't eat too much fish. You know, if you're pregnant, don't eat fish. If you've got this problem, don't eat fish because there's pollution in the waters and and uh, it's not sustainable. We're overfishing and and so many different. Just the the whole that that whole uh, spectrum of 
just going from you got to eat it all the time, but don't eat it because you're killing everything and you're destroying the oceans. So for that reason, I wanted to have uh, our special guest heretic today, Randy Hartnell from my favorite uh, seafood company, Vital Choice, can be found at vitalchoice.com. Randy, thank you for being on the show. Hi, Adrian. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, to be here. I don't here know today. if you remember me. I'm the person who's always asking you about the Exxon Valdez. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that yeah, right. it down <laughs> <to 100. laughs> uh, But um, tell, tell. Oh, I'm happy to be back in touch with you again, and uh, really appreciate the opportunity to help. Uh, oh, thank you so much audience. because I know that it, this is, like I said at the beginning, I I know that this is a huge issue for people. They know that they're supposed to be eating fish because of all the value fish brings, but they're afraid to eat it because it. We've poisoned our oceans. Uh, can you start by telling us first about the value of fish? What's the nutritional value? Why would people want to be eating fish, especially in times like pregnancy? Well, there are many reasons. Uh, first of all, probably should distinguish between types of fish. You know, you don't want to be out eat, eating large, top of the food chain predatory fish, which bioaccumulate lots of those bad things we all want to avoid. So, uh, in 2004, the FDA came out and with advice to uh, specifically to pregnant and nursing women to avoid three species of fish. These were uh, tilefish and shark and I think king mackerel, which all are known to have relatively high amounts of right. methylmercury. And uh, that advice basically swept through the media and the country and basically had a, a really detrimental effect in, in that people took it, especially pregnant nursing women who need these omega-3 fats more than anything. And the DHA, uh, the DHA, uh, for, right, for the DHA, baby DHA, that's right. But uh, from 2004 until now, uh, uh, seafood consumption mm -hmm. has declined because of this fear of uh, methylmercury. And uh, so the reason that people really you know, we, we want to get the truth out and uh, that, that it's so important is that DHA is an essential nutrient that we all need. You know, our, our uh, you know, primary organ systems all require DHA, our brain, our, every cell in our body, uh, but primarily the brain. And it's only found in, our, in the uh, right. marine food chain. And, and it's interesting to note and, that uh, as so. we see the decline in consuming these foods, we're seeing the increase in uh, children who can't focus, who have uh, um, other disorders that, that clearly are, are affecting their, their brain development, uh, as well as, on the other end, the dementia and other... Uh, you know, issues facing people not even necessarily that old. That's right. I have a, a, had the pleasure and honor of getting to know a lot of the scientists in this realm because I've been investigating this for a, more than a dozen years, trying to get at the truth. You know, what is the evidence? And, and because if you watch the headlines, you would believe that you, you'd be crazy to eat anything out of the ocean. But when you dig into the, the most credible science and you listen to the most credible scientists and researchers, People that don't have a hidden agendas mm. or corporate agendas, the people that are just actually in the labs doing the science, uh, you realize that uh, the benefits of eating seafood vastly outweigh right. the risks. And they're all, but, but one of the uh, fellows that I had the pleasure of meeting is a Dr. Michael Crawford, who's been at this for decades. And in fact, he wrote a book in the, in the early 70s called What We Eat. And uh, he predicted then that if we didn't address the fact that we were removing all these essential uh, fats, these omega-3 fats from the food supply, because as you know, they're, they're polyunsaturated fats and they're an enemy to anybody that wants shelf life, uh, exactly. great food with shelf life. And so we were re extracting those uh, brain nutrients, essential nutrients from the food supply. And he predicted that if we didn't do something to correct that, that there would be a proliferation of mental health disease. And indeed, that is exactly what has happened Right now, we're spending more on mental health disorders than heart disease and cancer mm -hmm. combined, and it's only expected to Yeah, exactly. Escalate. So where is all this methylmercury coming from? Oh, well, it's interesting. You know, they, they've retrieved uh, well, human remains uh, in the north, northern Alaska, uh, which they've aged at, uh, I think, about 10,000 years, and they find methylmercury in the hair samples. So these are mm -hmm. people that were eating seafood thousands of years ago. And uh, basically, methylmercury erodes into the into the ocean and right. the in the land, just like every other all the good stuff too, all the micronutrients and minerals and things that are 
eroding, flushed with the river down out into the ocean. And so methylmercury has always been there. And uh, in fact, 50% or more of it comes from underwater uh, volcanic activity. And of course, in industrial times, we've uh, begun burning fossil fuels, coal especially, which uh, puts more methylmercury into the environment and some of which washes into the oceans. But the important thing uh, that I've learned is that it's always been there. Life itself evolved in the ocean amid a background of trace levels right. of methyl, methyl mercury. And so for the most part, part has evolved a mechanism by which to, uh, you know, to deal with it. And, and micro Right, exactly. Levels. And I think, I think a lot of our problem right now is that, you know, it's people say, oh, well, the liver is a filter. It's supposed to deal with that. And that's, but we're just bombarded now, aren't we? We're not just with methyl mercury. We have a bunch of other things where our bodies are, we're not Normally, as as opposed to the mercury, which, as you're saying, and and actually I knew this before, but I wanted you to say it, uh, which is that the the mercury's always been there. However, we're just less capable between the malnutrition, which nobody wants to believe because we're, we're all obese, uh, <laughs> between the malnutrition that's going on right now, where people are unable to, uh, we're not getting enough of the minerals that help us to to chelate this this mercury, uh, but also just all the other toxins that we're dealing with. Well, that's right. The, uh, you know, uh, selenium is a, an essential nutrient that is part of the exactly. mechanism of detoxification of methyl mercury. And selenium comes from, among other things, right. ocean seafood. One of the richest sources are wild salmon and tuna. And so, uh, you know, one leading theory is that, and this explains why people can, that live in areas that consume large amounts of uh, seafood. I mean, in many parts of the world, people consume more seafood in a day than many right. Americans consume in a month. But when you avoid all the seafood, then you're also avoiding the selenium and all those other micronutrients that are so Right. Exactly. Uh, exactly. So, um, you know, as much as every, <laughs> I say this all the time on the on the show, as much as everybody always wants to say everything in moderation, we just don't do it. So we we uh, either flock, you know, we're all eating kale now because that's the that's the new buzzword. And nobody's eating fish because we're all afraid of it. And it's going to give us poisoning and so on. I, I think uh, we would be much healthier. We would be a much healthier population if we uh, feared processed carbohydrates as much as well. We that's just it. And, and this is a, a point that I bring up over and over and over again, which is that we're, we're so ready to believe that anything, let's just call Mother Nature, put on the planet is bad for us. Yet a dude in a white in a, in a white lab coat comes over and says, "Eat this twitching thing on us in, in a petri dish," and we're ready to eat that. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, another part of this, of course, is as you and I'm sure our viewers know, but it's worth mentioning. I think is that. Uh, I heard a quote from Peter Diamandis. He's a really smart guy who uh, started the X Prize. Uh, but anyway, he he said that you know the media, the new the news media, oh, are sure. drug pushers, and their drug of choice is negative mm. information. And and you know no better example of that than the methyl mercury fear, the the uh, radiation fears from right. Japan, and, and and you know as far as omega threes, there are over thirty thousand studies that have been done on omega-3s now i think it's it's second only wow. to vitamin c and eight, more than 80 percent of those studies have shown positive benefit the ones that haven't generally are you know inadequate mm -hmm. dose you know compounding problems but they're, they're really the science is in that omega-3 fats are, are one of the most essential uh, necessary things that we can consume and that's the studies have been coming in right. for years which is why you can see omega threes and eggs and bread and you know all kinds of stuff, but the fact is that it's no longer news. So the only omega three news you're seeing nowadays, for the most part, are reports of the tests that find a negative conclusion right. or that don't work. Uh, a couple of years ago, there was one that came out. Uh, where there was some indication uh, linking prostate oh, cancer geez. to omega three fat, <laughs> and that swept. Oh, that's great. That's yeah, because great. why, Negative why, you know, let's, let's right? confuse people more. And as many, and now the study was very flawed and, and the experts who looked at it concluded that this was a very flawed study, but that didn't stop about a third of the men in this country from Absolutely. throwing away their fish oil. And many to this day, just that's all they needed to hear. And they don't, nobody wants prostate cancer and I'm going to stop taking fish oil. So it had a very 
you know, absolutely. Impact. Absolutely. Sure. And it, as far as I'm concerned, it's marketing 101. Uh, and I did not grow up knowing anything about marketing until I tried to put my business uh, online. And uh, one thing you learn, one of the first things you learn is that people are more motivated to avoid pain than to move towards pleasure. That's right. We were, our brains uh, evolved to right. protect us against risk. So we're always on the lookout for right. anything. But you know, I got to say, I, I just I can't understand otherwise smart people believing anything that a, a money grubbing drug company, let's say, <laughs> or food processing company or or government uh, would say over what they can do themselves, you know, like this, we don't, I'll put it this way. We don't trust the government with anything. You talk to people about taxes, you talk to people about any, you know, incarceration, gun laws, whatever. Nobody trusts the government comes to food. The government wouldn't lie. <laughs> so. Yes. I, I think it's, uh, you know, we're talking about sort of the, the primal brain mm. we all carry around and it just reacts to perceived threats and, <laughs> uh, trying to explain away, you know, as I spend a lot of time doing, it, it, uh, ten people's eyes tend to glaze over, and they just don't don't want to listen to that. It's a lot easier to scare somebody with a threat. And then also talking about who to believe and who not to believe. You're right; there are there are just so many yeah. agendas out there. Uh, you've got the PETA people that don't want you eating anything that you know has a heartbeat, and they will say all kinds of bad things to discourage right. people from eating seafood, really play up oh, this whole sure. mercury thing. Or even mm-hmm. the environmental communities, you know, they they survive on, yeah, exactly. on donations. Exactly. Well, I worked for an NGO for a while and, you know, they, uh, some of these, a lot of them, they have no interest in anything ever happening because that's their bread and butter. That's that's how they yes, that's how they that's make right. their their money is is by scaring people and making them uh, believe just doom and gloom and and we're left with nothing but something sitting in a petri dish <laughs> at the end of the day. Exactly. Well, you you know, as far as seafood is concerned, you've got the vegan community that you know they'll play up the the, the fears. You've got the uh, as I said the the right. PETA P E T A uh, people for the ethical treatment of animals. Same thing. You've got the environmentalists that want to play up the mercury fears because they're going right. after the coal uh, industry. So there's just lots of people. You've got the yeah. supplement industry. I mean, I've seen fish oil supplement companies that actually advertise how contaminated seafood is so that you won't eat it. You'll, you'll in turn source the uh, supplement. But actually, if you look at the science, all those studies that I uh, talked about earlier, many of those uh, were looking at in- ingestion of seafood, right. not just pills or supplements. And, uh, and if you look at uh, you know Japan, take for instance, or the Seychelles Islands, where these people consume seafood almost every day, and you know, pregnant women consume seafood almost every day, and then you look at the health, the longevity, the infant, low infant mortality rates, it's pretty obvious that uh, they're benefiting. Right, and not, not only that, but the the ability to excel in things like mathematics and science, <laughs> and point. and you know just Great learning point. overall uh, is is really uh, reflected in that. And and sadly, uh, we're seeing the opposite, un- unfortunately, in many of our youth, where they're not, they, you know, they're they're just not developing properly, and it's starting in the womb. It's it's really tragic. I really wonder what's going to become of, of our people. Right. You well, you know, there's, around. there's, I, I can go into conspiracy theories, my friend, <laughs> about, you know, controlling populations and fluoride and <laughs> so many other things. I think it's just, you know, big food, you know, corporate. Uh, there's, there's not a lot of profit in seafood. And boy, I can tell you that firsthand. I, I mean, and what we're doing in this country is we've brainwashed everybody through the billions mm-hmm. of dollars of advertising. Uh, to, to always look for the cheapest food. And of course, that's changing. There are more and more people who are connecting the dots between nutrition and. Right. And, uh, well, well, the sad part, and, though, and, sorry uh, to cut but, you off, but the sad part there is that a lot of people will, when they start to think nutrition, I'm going to get healthy, I'm going to eat better, they immediately have this knee jerk reaction that they have to avoid all animal foods. Including fish. And so they, they, they swing to the vegan side of the, 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 uh, argument, let's say. And, you know, give that a couple of years to fail. It, it, oh, I've got a oh, great please do. story I have to share with you. I'm not going to mention any <laughs> names, but I, I spent some time with uh, some of the very iconic vegan people uh, mm. a couple of years ago. I went on a, and one of them, who has been a leader in that community for decades, confided in me that 
he did he did indeed occasionally right. eat wild salmon, and he did indeed encourage uh, people that he knew who maybe women who were pregnant that they they should eat wild salmon. Uh, yeah, never would he has he put any of this in wow. his writings on his, on his uh, you know. So he he knew that it was beneficial, even critically important, but was not willing to share that with his community because he was afraid of blowback. And well, enough said. It happens you know, a lot. And uh, actually, I can think of one person. I don't think it's the same person that you're talking about, but <laughs> I can think of one person who has softened uh, his his uh, message around fish oils, for example. Uh, and I don't know that it was necessarily even considered vegan when he started doing what he does. Uh, but yeah, he still sort of rides that line. And every once in a while, I might say it's okay to have some fish or particularly fish oils. Uh, and sometimes even, uh, oh, I know, I think I know who you're talking about. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I know who you're talking about. Well, no, I was thinking of somebody else. No, I know who you're talking about. <laughs> so anyway, but, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. And a lot of them have gotten that, that, um, uh, that bad press, that the death threats, the um, all, all of that stuff, uh, just because they've admitted um, that it's that it's OK. And you see, what I'm thinking is that now it, it, I was going to say, how can he sleep at night while misleading people? And I'm like, oh, yeah, he's eating fish. Of course he can sleep at night. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I, uh, I mean, that is really bothers me. I appreciate yes, that he was sure. willing to share that with me and he shared it with me in confidence. So I don't want to out him, but just uh, for anybody that's listening, that stuff's going on out there. They're telling people one thing and, and actually doing another. And uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, that. yeah, there's, there's a lot of that. And uh, that's why, like I always say, the, the answer is quite often somewhere in the middle. It's not in the extremes. And, uh, and even just looking at the, the new, the paleo movement, in my opinion, my experience has been that a lot of the paleo people were the vegan people a few years ago and then you know the diagnosis comes whatever and they realize they are allergic to everything on that side of the spectrum and they've got to go the other way uh, well i can also just throw in this is a totally uh you know my personal opinion but i was in the midst of a group of i don't know maybe two to three dozen mostly vegans and these were not right. healthy looking people and a lot of them had skin problems and Look like almost like they were wasting away, and I just I just want to grab them and hug them and say, <laughs> "Here, let me right. tell you about." Wild and wild. and uh, are you seeing the same thing that I'm seeing with uh, tremors, Parkinson's type manifestations? I don't recall that specifically, but uh, you know I can't tell you over the years the number of people uh, that come to us uh, that say they used to be you know, vegan. And certainly some people can get by just fine on that lifestyle, but I think the vast majority of people eventually right. have to give it up. You know, they just uh, finally right, start right. listening to their well, body, I, I, which is you know, oftentimes to tell them that it's just, yes. you know, it's craving some of these right. nutrients. I, I've definitely getting. been seeing uh, over the last decade an increase in people coming to me saying, well, you know, I only use olive oil and I don't eat this and I don't touch that. And, da -da -da -da, and they're shaking. You know, the, and they and they so, some of them are getting the diagnosis mm -hmm. of Parkinson's. Others are just being told that they have tremors. They're not they're not getting a diagnosis, but but they eat so healthy, so it couldn't possibly be something wrong with the diet. No, well, you know, it's what what is the definition of health now? And I, it's it's the one word that I actually don't like to use because it it means nothing anymore. This is this is one of my biggest pet peeves. It, to to use the word healthy, it could it sometimes it just means an idea to a lot of people. And not what is actually happening and what's being produced by the body. Oh, I'm just, you know, when it comes to seafood uh, or what we should be eating, there really is no more natural right. food left on the planet than seafood. We've been eating it for, uh, there's concrete evidence that humans have been eating seafood for over 160,000 wow. years. And compared of to 10,000 years, uh, right. that we've been practicing agriculture, right? I mean, this, the brain evolved in the sea 500 mm. million years ago, as did our eyes, you know, as did our neural systems. And that's why, uh, it's pretty obvious that that's why the, those marine nutrients, those omega-3 fats that evolved in the sea as well, those were the sort of the bricks and mortar that, that life evolved on. That's why our brain, is, they're concentrated in our brain, they're concentrated yes. in our eyes, they're concentrated in our right. reproductive organs. And so when all of a sudden you say, I'm not going to eat seafood, 
or any kind of a marine, uh, any kind of food that evolves in the mar- or develops in the marine environment, you're really cutting yourself off from some, some really important nutrition. And that's why there's so many, I mean, literally dozens and dozens of uh, health problems that can be directly linked to a deficiency of omega-3s. And 99% of the people in this country are Right, right, right. So how do you I ensure think. that your catch, when, like when you go out, because uh, you you have several fishermen, more than several, I'm assuming at this point, uh, fishermen who who fish on your behalf. They they know the most pristine waters, if I remember correctly from our previous conversations, uh, to fish in. What do you do to ensure that they're doing what they they're telling you they do? Well, as you may recall, Adrian, I was a commercial fisherman in Alaska mm-hmm. for over 20 years, and so I know I know the industry, I know the people, I know the methods, I know the regions that produce the best fish. And uh, sort of apply that to you know sourcing the products. Now, as far as we're talking about purity, it's really a function all, uh, of the region. You want to buy obviously from the cleanest places, but it's also a function of species, yes. which I alluded to earlier. So, in other words, you want fish that generally don't eat live very long. Their natural life cycle is a relatively short one. So, wild salmon only live two to four years, depending on the the particular species. Uh, so you're, uh, I know of nobody, no serious uh, research that indicates wild salmon are a methylmercury concern. I mean, just the opposite. They're typically considered one of the cleanest and safest fish. Uh, some of those wild, some of the five wild salmon species eat specifically at the very bottom of the food chain. So they're ingesting krill and plankton and, you know, all the tiny little critters, uh, and so they just don't bioaccumulate methylmercury. Now, do they have some? Yes, they have parts per, you know, fractions of a part per, per million. Uh, and and but there's never been any evidence that those low amounts uh, are at the and least. Sorry, how, how does that compare to yeah, what the sorry. EPA allows in fish? What, what you when because you test your catch, uh, correct? Well, I, the, so the EPA, I believe, lists uh, one part per million as r- a risk. For instance, wild salmon might be, depending on the species, 0.02 to 0.05 parts per million. So 2 to 5% of the EPA risk level. Now, it's really important to uh, mention, and and I really want to make this as clear as possible, that one part per million is not where they started seeing problems. The, The term is lowest level adverse effects. The lowest level adverse effects where they started seeing, they have seen problems in populations eating high mercury fish, was actually 10 parts per million. So because they know that there's a lot of unknowns, people are different, some process mercury more than others, they decided to build in, let's just take a tenfold safety factor. So even though it was 10 parts per million where we started seeing problems, we'll say that the safe, you know, the maximum safe amount is one part per million. Now you keep going down to 0.02, 0.05. Even tuna is uh, some of the riskiest, you know, so so some of the tuna that people are most concerned with might have 0.3. So 30% Ah. of the lower of of that. Not only are the levels extremely low risk uh, in the species that we sell, that we select, but uh, it's also important to look at it in context of all the good stuff you're getting. You know, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a net benefit. And uh, one big study in, in the UK that looked at over 14,000 mother infant pairs uh, concluded that uh, advice to limit seafood was actually causing the harm that it was intended. Right. At. And there's uh yeah, there's, there's, um, neglect or or maybe wishful thinking <laughs> because some people may say that if, i think a big problem with america is that so much of it is landlocked that and you know nobody goes out fishing with you know andy griffith or whatever and <laughs> so so um you know the, there's a lot of people who just don't like fish so they're using this as an excuse maybe that's a great point that's a really great point because they're uh, going back to you know, sort of our addiction to cheap food, and we probably pay less for food in this country than just about anywhere else. And you know, I'm gonna I'm going to challenge that because I think that people eat a lot more crap. <laughs> they eat a lot less food. Mm-hmm. So when I, but, you know, when I look, yeah, when, when, when I look at uh, at what I spend on food and what people who tell me they can't afford to eat like me spend on food, I'm spending less because I'm actually eating food. <laughs> 
but they're 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 consuming a lot. You know, they're they're buying chewing gum, they're smoking cigarettes, they're eating Doritos and boxed breakfast cereals. You know what we find, uh, what I've seen over and over again over the years is, you know, we go out, we spend a lot of it, our energy trying to educate people. We're passionate about getting this word out. And not only because we want to sell more fish, we're doing fine. We've grown every year we've been in business. So I honestly am not driven by the desire to, you know, get somebody to buy another piece of fish from us. Like, in fact, I tell people you can get, you know, Alaska salmon in just right. about any grocery store in a in a can, it's very economical. And uh, but what I'm driven about is just to get through to people and and convince them that you know spending a little more on good quality seafood is going to pay big dividends uh, right. in, in your health. And, so, so let's stop uh, let's stop uh, arguing over healthcare and start focusing on just not even needing the healthcare. <laughs> And as a fisherman for 20 years, virtually every wild salmon that I caught in Alaska went to wow. Japan, some to Europe, because people in this country just don't want to pay for good quality seafood. We'd rather buy this cheap tilapia or this cheap catfish or cheap Asian shrimp, all of which are you know, raised in a non-sustainable manner, but nutritional benefits or nutritional sort of nutrient density is nowhere near uh, what you'd find yeah, can, in wild Can you seafood. elucidate a little yeah. bit on that? The uh, the difference between what is people think that farmed is going to be better. Tell us a little bit about <laughs> farmed well, in some versus cases, wild. You know, in some yeah, I don't I don't want to paint with too broad a brush here. There are some types of farming mm -hmm. aquaculture uh, that is absolutely fantastic, and we need to be doing more of it. And specifically, this is shellfish aquaculture. So raising shrimp, I mean, excuse me, raising uh, oysters and mussels and clams, those are very sustainable, very nutritious. And, uh, but, but when it comes to an ocean-roving uh, carnivore like wild salmon, uh, putting them in a pan, pan and feeding them pellets with all kinds of uh, you know, additives that wouldn't normally be in their yeah, like soy and corn. It's not a good. <laughs> yes, yeah. I mean, just like cattle and pigs and uh, chickens and everything else we raise in, in our industrial food system, uh, we feed it the cheapest possible food yeah, we and, can. To yeah, get come it. on, Randy. Let's <laughs> let's be honest. Right. We know that that salmon travel thousands of miles to get to the nearest soy bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, not our salmon. <laughs> our salmon are eating the same thing they've been eating for forever, and uh, and consequently, they're they are a one hundred percent natural food that we know our mm. bodies know what to do with, as opposed to farm salmon that are, you know, fed grains. They have a lot higher of these uh, amounts of these omega, uh, pro inflammatory right. omega sixes because they are fed the the grains. Well, I usually uh, like to tell people to check out this website if they want to learn more about farm salmon. Yeah, because yeah I you can, you can, you can drop a URL that. if you'd like. Yeah, it's uh, farmedanddangerous.org. Uh, there are a bunch of them. If you just Google farm salmon, you can read all you want. But farmedanddangerous.org has done a good job of consolidating you know, the, the problems. Okay, awesome. Salmon. Yeah, because uh, one thing uh, right off the bat I will tell you about farm salmon is, well, first of all, we're talking about omega-3s and we're talking about fats. So people, everybody's fat phobic and I don't like the taste of fat, yeah, 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 yeah. right? So with Randy's fish, First of all, m your fish is, is basically a favorite of anybody who's ever eaten in my house or has received a gift from me for the last whenever the hell I met you. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so, but, you know, I, I give it to people. I, you know, share it and uh, everybody goes, Oh my God, where'd you get that fish? So, um, you know, it's, it's perfect for the person you don't know what to, what the hell to buy them. Uh, but his fish does not taste greasy, which I think is, was one thing that people are expecting. Oh, it's fat. No, it's not. It's a, it's a nice steaky fish, but it's also very delicate. And you do have some of the, I want to say like special edition fish where you may happen upon a, a school of, of some of the, uh, the more buttery varieties of of salmon and those are always a tr an extra treat uh but they're not they're not really dry but they're not really greasy and when you when i have farmed salmon which is extremely rare and it's when you know my brain farts and my order something somewhere where i shouldn't uh is that uh it's it's orange in color which from what i understand comes from dye pellets that they're fed or or shrimp when they're because they, they are actually gray from being in co confinement and then 
Yeah, well, the wild salmon are eating an algae that provides a, an antioxidant nutrient yes. called astaxanthin. And also, it's a carotenoid, and it, they get that naturally in their diet. It's where the orange you see and all kinds of shellfish and, uh, comes from. But farm salmon right. do not get that in their diet, and so it's, they are supplemented with a synthetic version of that, uh, synthetic astaxanthin, uh, which colors their flesh. And the redder that the farmer wants his salmon flesh to appear, the more that they'll put in. I was going to say I, that it always seems like they're just what, orange it, to me. They don't look, <laughs> they don't look red. Yours look pink to red. Uh, and the farmed ones, I don't think I've ever seen a farmed salmon even come close to looking a natural salmon color. Yeah, they also have the big... Uh, that big was my second thing is that they've got this nasty, stuff. greasy slick. Well, it's a different kind of fat. It's more saturated fat and it's, uh, you know, it's... Uh, People have said before, it, you know, they're sort of the couch <laughs> potatoes of the salmon world. They swim around. They don't get a lot of exercise, as opposed to a wild salmon that's right. uh, fighting for his life every single day and uh, swimming vast distances. And uh, you have only the you know the healthiest uh, fish that ever right. make it back. You know. Right. Good to know. And thank you for, for sharing that URL, because the, that was one of the questions from our uh, listeners uh, was, you know, how to how to know what's going on with fish. So uh, just uh, we're going to wrap up kind of soon, but I wanted to find out from you, how has Fukushima impacted the fish supply? I'm really glad you asked that, uh, Adrian, because that is uh, on the for forefront of a lot of people's minds. Uh, and I live in Hawaii. I don't know if I, I didn't tell you week. that, did I? I live in Hawaii, and I'm sure that Alaska and Hawaii have very similar concerns. Yeah, if you go to vitalchoice.com, our website, and you and the little box in the upper right, you just type in Fukushima, you can read all kinds of things. So we've been testing our fish uh, for years, ever since Fukushima, for radiation. We send it to one of the most credible labs for okay. that type of testing. They're called Eurofans. We've tested, I think, at least once a year, if not more. We tested 16 different species, and we've never found any indication of any kind of uh, levels that, uh, in most, almost all cases, more than 90% of the tests, we haven't even had a detect for cesium-137 or whatever, strontium-91, what you would expect to find if, and probably would find if you were uh, catching fish uh, near you know, the, mm -hmm. the reactor. But uh, what, it, what I, we've been told, and if you go to like Woods Hole uh, Oceanographic Institute, the, the scientists, again, that are out there actually doing the science and not trying to sell clicks and grab eyeballs with uh, sensational headlines, uh, if you go and look at what the science is, essentially... The ocean is a big place, and there's a, a dilution factor that is basically resulting in the fact that the seafood is not contaminated. Now, again, we can in this day and age with the technology we have, we can identify just the most minute levels, parts per trillion. And so you can't say that it, there is none, but again, it, it comes right. back to dose. And the fact is that we have a lot more of this. Okay, on our great. As well. And so, what does, because uh, our, obviously, our podcast, it's global. Uh, are there any special considerations for people in Europe, South America, Australia, Asia, Africa? We didn't get a chance to talk about sustainability, but that's really a. Yeah, a, a it's, huge it's, part it feels of this, like uh, we've kind of um, been riding over the, <laughs> well, I can, the sustainable. I can say that, you know, there was just an article that came out uh, on Huffington Post, I think, this weekend which was some rare good news about how, you know, consumer focus on sustainable seafood is creating mm -hmm. more demand for it. That filters back to the fisheries uh, right. management. In other words, there's no market for fish that aren't being responsibly managed or, or, or it's rapidly declining. And that's putting pressure on the managers to do a better job of managing them. And uh, probably there, there are over 30 different NGOs now focused on what, sustainable What are seafood. some of the, uh, the, the least sustainable varieties that people want to avoid? Sea bass was on that list, right? Uh, you know, rather than, rather than trying to point out the least sustainable, and point out the most sustainable. Identify the most credible, the most credible organizations, which are uh, the Marine Stewardship Council. And you can read more about them at msc.org, Marine Stewardship Council. They are the gold standard in marine sustainability. And we've been a licensee of, with them for over 12 years. So, uh, And it's not easy. You have to jump through a lot of hoops. It's expensive, but that's, you know, that's necessary if they're going to be credible. Anyway, they are uh, constantly certifying new fisheries. And uh, so if you look for their logo... Uh, the Monterey Bay Aquarium is another organization. Uh, there are quite a few of them out there. But if 
you find, uh, and then any food, uh, seafood that comes out of Alaska, you know, it's written right into the Alaska state wow. constitution since, uh, came a state that all of their seafood will be harvested on a sustainable yield basis. So they're, Basically, that means that they have scientists that are in charge of every river and every fish that's caught. And so you just don't get non-sustainable Alaska that's seafood awesome. into the market. That's awesome. Suffice. So MSC, are they the ones who put out that little um, that little guide to fish that, that often comes in my Vital Choice box? Uh, I think the one you're referring to oh, is, it is Monterey. Uh, okay. Monterey Bay Aquarium. Okay. Yeah. We've distributed, I think, thousands thousands and thousands of those over the last 10 years to try to help educate people about what are the best choices. But basically, uh, if you buy anything from Vital Choice, it will definitely be sustainable. If you, uh, and, and there is more and more pressure. Even at McDonald's, if you really? buy a fish sandwich now, they, they have committed to use exclusively sustainable seafood. So most of those fish sandwiches, not only in the United States, but in Europe, come from uh, MSC certified Alaskan uh, wow. pollock. Wow. It's, it's really a good news story. If you, if you Google Huffington Post uh, sustainable seafood, you'll probably wow. be able to pull that wow. up. Wow. I guess you have to give it over to Mickey D's for finally getting on, <laughs> finally getting on board <laughs> with something. <laughs> I don't know. Like Walmart and Target and uh, a lot of these big chains, and, and that's really a great – and not that you know, I shop at uh, McDonald's. They're eating McDonald's. <laughs> normally but uh, but they do drive so and, much and i mean if we can at least that, get people who are sh- who are eating in those places to get the awareness like oh i didn't even know that was a problem but they're in mcdonald's so i guess you get the audience where you can to to start the th- the thought process yeah it all starts with uh, the consumer you know voting with your fork mm-hmm. as the saying goes and uh, and uh, it's really encouraging and more and more of that is happening and many of our fisheries around the world are now stabilizing rebounding there's still a lot of work to do but uh the pro- the the trend right, is very right. positive so are the other are other countries continents are they having the same issues with whether it's contamination or uh sustainability that we're seeing here in the US i started to ask that question before about europe and asia south america etc uh what i've been told i scientists is that people in japan think we're crazy <laughs> for right. worrying about mercury i mean and all, i mean think i mean they're eating seafood all the time and as we talked about earlier they're they're just fine thank you health wise uh, now the, the problem with people in japan is they're starting to adopt a, a western diet with yeah. more of the bad stuff you know the processes and but uh you know you look around the world the longest lived people they're eating lots of seafood so uh, I think the media has just scared the daylights out of people, and, and we avoid one of the healthiest foods that we could be eating. And as I said earlier, there are some species you want to try to avoid, but uh, but most of seafood carries way more benefits. Right. Than yeah, and you know, there is – I do have a friend who is very – She's very turned off right now, but although she will eat your fish when I serve her your fish, uh, but she's very afraid and very uh, nervous when she's around fish, particularly raw fish, because she's apparently, I don't know what other factors are going on in her diet, why this happened, but she basically poisoned herself with a bunch of raw fish. Is that, are, are we looking at the same things generally when people say that they got poison? I'll just make a couple quick points on that. You don't want to be eating raw fish that has okay. not been frozen. And so every fish, all the fish that we send is either canned or it's been frozen to a very cold temperature. And so it's completely safe. We've never had any uh, issue with people getting sick from our fish. You can go into a sushi bar and there's a lot of mislabeling. They'll say it's Maybe they'll say it's tuna when it's actually escalar. Escalar is a fish that basically causes mm-hmm. severe gastric distress. It's even illegal in Japan, but it's cheap. And uh, a lot of the lower end sushi bars will buy it and call it something else, and then and you get really sick from it. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, what was the question <laughs> again? <laughs> I was thinking about my brother's family who went to Hawaii and they went to a, a sushi bar their first night oh, there. No. All you can eat. <laughs> they were all. And they were serving this escalar, and it was, uh, you know, they were down for like two yeah, or three days. Yeah, you know, it was, I guess it was, it was similar. It's, it's just, you know, the whole food poisoning, because that is something that does worry people about yeah, the other, other contaminations. And, and you know, oh, my gosh, it was out for on the counter for an hour. Am I going to die now? You know. Yeah, I think we make these associations, and, and sometimes one thing gets blamed for making you sick when actually it's yeah, something I completely think. different. <laughs> uh, Seafood is... I mean, good quality seafood is is if it's been well cared for, especially if it's been frozen. And you, 
See, part of the problem is with most seafood that's sold in grocery stores is they don't like to sell it frozen. They yes. like to thaw it out. And so then it sits there and these, these fats that are so healthy, they also are very vulnerable yes. to oxidization. So they break down and become rancid. And, and so a lot of seafood counter clerks don't want mm -hmm. to throw things away. You know, it, I have a fellow that works for us uh, who was a meat and seafood counter guy for 30 years before he retired and joined us. And, and it's been very interesting to get his insight. He said, you know, they used to, in their stores, they would actually soak the fish in buttermilk to try to get an mm -hmm. extra day or two out of it. Or they would, uh, anyway, uh, the problem with grocery store bought seafood is you just have, like anything, you have to know your vendor. You have to go to stores that are not. You know, when something goes bad, they will toss it out and not try to pawn it off. On well, uh, one of the things customer. that you're bringing up for me now is uh, when I was living in New Jersey, I knew my my uh, fish and and meat vendor uh, quite well. And I asked him one day, I said, so what's the deal with the chicken that's skinless and the, you know, the fish you have over here with the marinade? He's like, yeah, that's the stuff that, uh, you know, we should have thrown out yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and they... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and the result of that goes back to something we were talking about earlier, that people in this country don't like fish, and a lot of that, is, in my experience, is that they just oh, haven't yeah. had a good experience. Somewhere somewhere in the past, they their aunt or grandma or somebody served them some fish that was really fishy and totally. nasty tasting, and they've decided, well, if that's what seafood uh, tastes like, count me out, and go through their whole lives avoiding something that is so good and uh and then one other thing I just want to throw in before we end is a lot of people are intimidated by mm. preparing seafood. Oh Reality is one of the easiest, quickest right. things to cook. And on our website, we've got a whole series of uh, little one-minute videos. Yeah, you've got some great recipes on, on your website. So definitely uh, check that out. Uh, uh, this, I just, Sorry, before I let you go, I have uh, Eileen Grossman, one of our listeners. She had a couple of questions for you. Uh, first of all is packaging. Uh, she had heard that it's okay for – there's no real regulation on the term wild caught for salmon and she wants to know whether or not she can trust packaging if she buys some salmon canned or otherwise that says wild caught is it really wild caught or is there some weird loophole that people are getting through oh that's a fantastic question uh unfortunately there is a lot of bait and switch a lot of fraud out of the marketplace i was in new york uh, fulton fish market a few years ago and we were in a uh, fish stall and uh, i noticed all these cases of salmon that said uh, these boxes that said uh, mm. wild king salmon well this was off season this was in like november and i said well where in the world are you getting all this wild king salmon this time of year and he said well that's mm. farm wild king salmon we sell sixty thousand pounds a week <laughs> people don't want to pay for real wild nice salmon. <laughs> yeah and so I wrote an article about that in our newsletter, which you could find on our website if you're interested. And New York, Marion Burroughs at the New York Times called us. Uh, they ended up doing a front page uh, Sunday New York Times expose about it. And, and the truth is that uh, every time there's an investigation into this, they find a, a large amount of bait and switch. So it really just comes back to, and as the case with anything, you know, just know your vendor, buy from people who... You know, or not, uh, who are likely to be telling you the truth. And also, if, when it comes to wild, you should say, well, where was the wild salmon from? Because if it's truly wild, it probably came from Alaska, and they will know that. But if it's uh, if they waffle, if they don't really know, then chances are that it's actually. Boy, there's salmon. like the stupidest con people ever, <laughs> which I guess is is good for those of us who know. Well, a lot of these people that are working behind the counter are, are not paid very well. They're not trained very well. And they're telling people uh, so often I see them just telling people what they oh, think. Oh, don't they even get me hear. started. Whether it's, in a <laughs> whether it's in a restaurant or a grocery store, uh, if it's truly wild, they will know, you know, that came from Southeast Alaska or that came from, you know, wherever. Uh, but if they seem a little uncertain, then uh, because they have to pay a lot more generally to and go to a lot more trouble to get wild salmon. And so they will know, you know, have more right, details right. about yeah, it. Yeah, actually, I, you're bringing up so many things for me. I was just, just even going in, yeah, even just the going into the, the, the local health food store. One time I, I heard uh, our uh, lovely woman <laughs> trying to explain to someone what an omega-3 was. And she basically said... <laughs> <laughs> that it was the the um, DHA and the EPA, 
thought that was the <laughs> part of the three <laughs> in the Omega-3. I was like, that's not quite what it, and that means. Yeah, it's hard for a lot of people to say, well, let me right. check that out and get back to you. A lot of people just like manufacture. They're exactly, they yeah, but hear, she was but, totally um, pulling this out of her butt. I, I, you yeah, said you had yeah I got to let you go. But, um, uh, yeah, she wanted I, to because tuna, ahi, is, is uh, very popular here in Hawaii. So she wants to know what should we be looking for? What's the maximum size ahi we want to buy if we're buying it here in Hawaii? You know, it's really hard to I can't really answer that. I think ahi is generally a, a, mm-hmm. a larger fish. Generally, you're buying portions, so you have no idea what, what size right. fish it came from. And uh, I think, personally, I just uh, remember that tuna is a great source yes. of selenium, which Chelator. is a natural sort of antidote. Yes, chelator. And I don't think you want to eat a lot of any particular right. kind of big fish uh, every day or every week, just mix it up with other species right. that are known to be. Okay, yeah, them. because I know that I can get for some you know, some local guys here. They'll they'll go fishing and they'll sell a fish like a whole fish, but it'll be. Uh, I'm trying to think. What was the last the last one I bought? Cost me less than twenty bucks, and it was three dollars a pound. So what do we look at? Six seven pounds, like a seven pound fish, a seven pound ahi. Should that be reasonable as far as avoiding contaminants and yeah, well, I'm talking about like the 500 right. pound marlin and the billfish and the, uh, you know, those are the, the ones that have lived a long time. And I honestly, I, we don't carry ahi and I'm not that familiar with it. I know that albacore is a really mm. rapidly growing fish and it gets, and then we, we select out, uh, you know, the smallest of the catch. So they're, these are usually two, three, four year old fish. And, uh, and again, they are going to have some trace levels in there, but they have other, lots of other good things that will, benefit you and you know help you with the detox right right. so so uh, awesome well thank you so much for your time randy i know that your time is precious to you um and uh we will continue i will definitely continue to uh let people know about your product because it is a phenomenal product and let me tell you anybody out there thinks that they don't like fish you have not had randy's fish so you should uh definitely go uh check out vitalchoice.com there's also links to vitalchoice.com on our website and we i actually keep people up to date on um whatever specials you have going on because you do uh, run some uh, occasional discounts, uh, maybe 10% here or uh, some of you actually do uh, fish oil supplements now, uh, as well as things like crab and um, mussels, clams. You've, We've got all your your canned mackerel can't <laughs> be uh, beat. I'm going thing. on vacation and I'm going to be taking that with me. <laughs> Yeah. One last thing, uh, Adrian. I just want to mention that we do have a, a online newsletter that people can Absolutely. subscribe to, and that uh, will keep them up to date on products and issue, you know, articles about these types of issues we've been discussing. <laughs> discussing <laughs> discount. Right. Wait a minute! Wrong message, yes. Randy. <laughs> <laughs> Discussing uh, recipes, all kinds of good stuff. Yes, so, so yes, uh, check that out, vitalchoice.com. Sign up for his newsletter. Uh, as I said, you can get the links also on our website, which is nutritionheretic.com. Thanks again, Randy. Have a fantastic day and keep up the good work. Oh, and by the way, Randy's Thank looking quite Richard. tasty these days. He lost some weight. <laughs> he's, he's looking <laughs> lovely. So you're still married though, right? Oh, okay. Oh, well. <laughs> so, I was going to say the single ladies out there, you might want to, you know, but he's, he's looking fantastic. Not that you were porky or anything before, but you look great. You look, you look fantastic. <laughs> and obviously the fish is working. I, I like to think so. <laughs> Have a good one. Thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you, Adrian. Bye now. The Nutrition Heretic Podcast is a production of Savor the Journey, LLC. Our audio editor is Nikola Popovich. Our podcast manager is Crystal McLean, and our operations manager is Linda Hansen. I'm your host, Adrian Hugh, the Nutrition Heretic. You can find us at nutritionheretic.com, where you can download the Nutrition Heretic's free shit list of seven health foods to avoid like the plague. You can also listen to previous episodes at nutritionheretic.com slash podcast. Be sure to like us on social media for updates. Our Facebook page is facebook.com slash nutritionheretic and on Twitter at NutriHeretic. Contact us with show ideas, questions, or if you just want to be a guest. And don't forget to rate our podcast on iTunes and Stitcher. Thanks. Thanks.